welcome here to our um, offices here at Retro Rabbits in Bramfontein. We only opened these offices earlier this year, and it's the first Rabbiteer talk that we've had here. It's our first Rabbiteer talk for the year. So welcome, and thank you for joining us, despite this lovely rainy weather. Um, so this is our first Rabbiteer talk, which is um, focused on design, actually. Um, we're going to bring that in a bit more this year. We have five talks this year, and two of them will be uh, design-based. So follow our... Um, Follow us on Facebook and on the Meetup page, and then you can also join us on Slack to get updates about the talks. The next one will be in June as well. And if you're a student that's here, we're um, introducing Jump Talks this year, which is aimed at getting you ready for industry. So teaching you all the practical things you need in industry, which you don't really get uh, taught at Varsity. So that's both for design and dev. Okay, so for tonight, I'm sure most of you have heard the buzzword UX and UI. Um, it's user interface design and user experience design. Now, these two often get used interchangeably and they're really not. So experience design focuses on how a solution feels and how it functions, whereas the interface design focuses more on how it looks and how it's laid out. So I have a very big aversion to the word user we don't design for users, we design for people. We design for humans. And it's very easy to remove who the person we're designing from um, from the context if you start calling them users. So our goal in the end is to try and understand these people we're trying to design for and to build solutions that they want and that they want to use. So. If you think you've designed the perfect thing, come up with the perfect solution for an interface, for an experience, and you think it's the perfect thing, but the user doesn't, they're either not going to try and find a way to subvert the thing that you've given them if it doesn't work in the way that they want it to do, or most likely they're probably just going to abandon it. The only way that you can force people to use interactions that they are not accustomed to or don't like is if you're Facebook or Google because they can pretty much get away with anything they want to. Those of us that are still trying to reach Google's level, they're probably just going to abandon our solution. Now that being said, people can be idiots. So the way that they want to use something is not necessarily the best way to actually use it. So the thing that we need to have and understand is we need to have empathy for our dear idiots. Um, because if people can't, figure out how to actually use the thing that you're trying to get them to use, the solution that you've built, then you've failed in what you're trying to do. So it means that something that you've done is unclear, or there's something wrong with the experience you've designed. So you need to think about it and prototype it and test it to find a way that works that they want to use it. You need to figure out why they're not coming right with what you've given them. So we try and follow a very iterative design process. So you empathize with the user, you try and understand what they want, you try and define those things into logical steps, and then you start thinking, you ideate, you sketch, you start building things, you start prototyping them, and then you test them. Once you've tested it, you'll find where things don't work, where the flaws are, what people don't understand. Then you go back to the ideation, and this is a circle that keeps looping. And this is the part that tends to drive the developers insane because we think we have finalized designs. It gets into production and the users, for the life of them, have no idea what to do with your design. Which is why we try and test things before it actually gets to production, before the developers actually spend time and effort building it. Now, when it comes to prototyping, most of us tend to jump directly to designing on screen because things look prettier and they're nice and it's so easy to just move something five pixels to the left. But that's not the point. When you're prototyping, it's thinking. It's making what you will set out, your thinking process, making it visual and taking that and putting it into steps that the user can understand. So we need to try and focus to get back to always starting to sketch out your ideas. Start by prototyping it on paper. It takes more time, 
but in the end, it actually saves a lot of time because the developers don't end up building it and spending their time on it. So paper prototypes are such a valuable tool. Literally two pieces of paper next, um, behind each other to show you click here, you go there. Someone clicks there and they don't understand why they went there. Already shows you that you've done something wrong. Now when it comes to usability, that's another thing. We tend to think about how one screen flows from one to the next. But how many of you actually consider the actual device that you're designing for? So how many of you, when you taste or when you design, or when you're looking at your designs, even when you've built the front end, how many of you actually go and test that on an actual device? Some sort of mirroring software where you can see, oh, but this button is way too small to actually use. I actually physically can't reach this with my thumb. Which brings me to the fact of why are burger menus in the top left, generally? Because no one can reach them. I don't understand this. So something that's become commonplace, which is not necessarily the best user experience. Just a thought. And another part of creating usable interfaces is also considering the environment and the context that people use these devices in. So now I want some audience participation, please. So if you think of an ATM, what kind of things do you think you need to consider when designing for an ATM screen? Anyone? Sorry? OK, so you need to think about the fact that there's an interaction which doesn't involve the screen. If you put the money into the slot, that's true. That's very true. This um, blindness and color blindness very often gets overlooked because people don't, you, you're thinking about things in your own context. You're not necessarily considering other people, which is a problem. What, one of you had uh, different, languages. different languages. That's a very good point. Um, we have a very diverse country. Not everyone speaks English or is very well versed in English. Go. Okay. A few of the ones that I came up with, so it so needs to be able to be used by anyone with a bank card. There's a very big security aspect, so the screen is not visible from another angle. Interactions need to be quite simple and fast. I had to draw money here in Braunfontein earlier today. I tried to do it as quickly as possible because it was terrifying. Um, there are limited buttons that you can use, and it's generally not touch screens. So this is an ultrasound device. What kind of um, considerations would you say there would be here? Anyone? Very good point. So in the previous one, you wanted only the person looking at it to see it. Here, you need the person lying on the bed to still have a clear view of what's going on on the screen. Anyone else? OK. So used by a doctor or a nurse or a technician. It has very specialized controls. You can see all the knobs and things down there. This is not generally used by the public, so it's okay to have a very specialized device which might need some training. It doesn't need to be able to be picked up by anyone on the App Store. And you also have two screens. So as Sam mentioned, you have the top screen, which needs to present very simple information for the patient to view. And then the bottom screen generally has a lot more technical information on there. Now, looking at this, for instance, if you're designing for uh, an app or something that would go on the back of a car, uh, car seat, what kind of considerations would you think there would be? Sorry? Yeah, so the buttons need to be quite large because it's difficult to press. Yeah, exactly. It shouldn't be too small. So, also said it needs to be used by a child or a passenger. You need to reach so it's not stable. You have a moving car, shaking, difficult to interact, so big spaces for interactions. And if it's on, an, on the App Store, for instance, you'll have minimal training um, that's possible. Now, if you're designing for this interface, for instance, Prototyping would not just involve designing the actual screen and testing whether the interactions are logical. 
you need to test whether people can touch it while being shaken around in a car. Now, I got some lovely volunteers to help me with this scenario to show that you really don't need high tech in order to test this. A very simple solution, a very silly solution, but very effective. So I intentionally made the buttons very, very tiny, and Hein couldn't touch them at all, understandably. So when you're designing, don't just think of what you're designing. Think of the context in which it will be used. So um, the practical part of this workshop, I just want to say, is inspired by Mr. Kevin Cannon. I attended a workshop of his last year. He's an interaction designer at Frog in Germany. And you can follow him at Multikev on Twitter. Um, he does quite a lot of talks and presentations. And he is very insightful with the way that he designs things for um, interaction design in the real world. So now we get to the practical part. So I want you to design an interface for a museum info kiosk. And go. Okay, you all look very confused, which is a very good thing, because I've given you almost no information. Now, this is the kind of brief that clients often give you. And they just say, design me a thing. And you go, okay, and you spend a week trying to figure it out. Don't do that. So, number one rule, always ask questions. Whether this comes to development, design, anything, ask questions. The more information you have, the better. Um, questions like, what kind of museum? What kind of device is the interface for? How detailed must the designs be? What are the considerations and constraints? And am I doing this by myself right now? So, we are designing an interface for a natural history museum. Uh, there will be one of three info kiosk devices which our lovely helpers will distribute to you. And once you've broken up into teams of six people, so look at six people, or five other people at least, that you would like to spend the rest of the evening with and make friends. We'll help you to find friends. If you don't have any, it's okay. And then, <laughs> so for this first part, we're gonna design um, some low level, where, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, I'll give you guys time to break up into groups just now. Guys, I'll give you time to break up into groups just now. Just um, hear me out. We're going to be designing for the first part low-level uh, or lo-fi wireframes on A4 pages. So when I say low-level low wireframes, I'm talking about this kind of level. So I don't care what color the buttons are. I don't care... Which, um, what the radius on them is. I just want to get an idea of where things are spaced, what kind of information you want where. You don't have to draw out beautiful pictures. You can draw an X and say, image goes here. So if you're designing an info desk kiosk and a natural history museum, what kind of considerations would you say is necessary for that? Anyone? Yes. Sorry? Easy touch screen, yes. So, yes, that's a good point. So what kind of target market is at a natural history museum? Pretty much anyone. So it's foreigners, non-English speakers, adults uh, bringing their children. It's a wide variety of people. So you need to cater for everyone, which makes it a lot more complicated. Sorry? I can't quite hear you. Device hardware. It's a good point. You, you, are, you need to know what the devices are actually capable of. Very true. Okay, so some of the things that I got here is, okay, it's a bit small, um, but it'll be used by both adults and children. There are different sections in the museum. There are non-English speakers. and. Museums tend to be very busy with lots of people, um, and there's minimal training time. Um, so, and the three different info, info kiosks have very different features and specialities. 
So you need to look very carefully at what these kiosks are capable of. Some of them have some very cool features which you can choose to use in interesting ways. And then requirements, just to uh, flesh the brief out a bit more. So the museum goers need to be able to see the promo um, promoted exhibits and specials. They need to be able to get an overview of exhibits, explore individual exhibits, uh, search for keywords and find key points in the museum like bathrooms or exits. Okay, so here's the brief. You have 20 minutes. So at the back there, there are markers, cookies, and A4 pages. Only focus on those for now. No, 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 you can't take all of them right now for yourself. <laughs> um, okay, so 20 minutes, divide into groups of six. You can get the... Um, sheets for the different info kiosks right over there and go. So, I hope you've all had some time to, oi, 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 focus you, no, none of that. Eyes here, look, look, okay, okay. So, I hope you've had some time to sit and think and just consider the different, diff nah, different intricacies of what it entails to design for a specific device in a specific environment. Uh, with a very specific target audience, which is everyone, which is not that specific, but still very tricky. So, now, I want you to design and build it to scale. So you'll see on your sheets, the specifications for the screen size, as well as the physical dimensions for the actual device are on there, with a reason. So there are packs of giant cardboard boxes right at the bo back. There are giant sheets of paper as well. There are scissors and press stick and tape. And I want you to actually build the device that you will be designing for. So the reason for this is you will find that once you actually see the physical size of the thing that you're designing for, you suddenly realize, oh wait, this thing that looks so perfect on an A4, you physically can't reach when it's a meter by two meters or when it's this high. Then also consider that children need to use this, which are generally not very tall. People in wheelchairs also need to be able to interact with this and reach it. So don't put important things right at the top or on the furthest edge. Um, you'll see some of your devices um, the one device has a connect that it can add, the tall one. Is, um, do you want to involve some, the, an interactive element in it? The flat table has an uh, element that you can add objects onto it, which it can uh, recognize and interact with. Consider that when designing it. So at the end of this, we are eat, one person from each team is going to act out and demonstrate their design to the rest of us. So you'll have two minutes for that. So just think who in your team will be doing that. Um, and you'll be acting out the key interactions on your screen. Okay. So the important things is I want to hear how your designs changed and what, how you adapted them once you actually saw the physical size of it. So I don't need to see the baseboard and this stand of the thing that it's on. It just needs to be the actual height of your device and the screen size needs to be correct. The rest of it is not that important. Although if you do choose to design it with the perfect bevels, you'll get extra points, but I don't know where you'll find the time. So, you will have 45 minutes for this and go.
everyone please join us here at the front so that we can look through hear what team one has come up with or the first team at least okay so we have the promoted exhibitions right up top here so when you click on a promoted exhibition it can take you to your point of interest so it'll draw a line to whichever point of interest you have so, hmm? yeah Wait, 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 hold on. Just let him finish his, his uh, <laughs> presentation first. All right. And then we can hold it up for everyone to see. Okay. So this map allows you to have an overview of your exhibition. So you can see everything on the, the museum's exhibition. So, and then you have all the featured exhibits on the side here. So you can, you can go to a certain featured exhibit by clicking on on one of these buttons, these icons. Here they have icons, so like multiple la language people can use them. <laughs> and then we have like the promoted exhibits also with a bar at the bottom here. So we have tabs that like scroll through so you can see the promoted exhibits, see more about them. And then you have this the search keyword bar here with the alphabet on, so you can tap A, then you go to all the A, all the exhibits listed under A, and then, yeah, then you have your key points here also mapped out, like the bathrooms and where, you're point, where you are at the moment on the side here. And you can change the language on the, hmm? on there, yes, that one. <laughs> all right, and, and it's, and it's kitty friendly, so you can stand on your knees and, and reach everything. So it's easy reachable. Yeah. And you can have multiple users. So this is why we split the screen up. So you can have two users use the screen at the same time. Yeah. Oh, that's a very cool solution. Congratulations. Thank you. So that's a very cool solution because um, it does allow for two different users to use it at the same time because museums are usually crowded and no one's looking for the same things. So if you approach a um, kiosk and someone else is already using it, it's terrible having to wait your turn. So that's a quite a cool solution. I think even though you, you realize you have longer arms than a child, right? So uh, even, even though while acting it out, I know, but easier. Fair enough. No, no, fair enough. But um, so still putting key interactions uh, at the top might be slightly problematic. It could be easy enough to just move them slightly down here. Um, but otherwise, I think you guys made a good use of the space. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so this is uh, the main interface, the first page. So as you come on, there's um, the overview of the museum, so the gallery and all the past events, you can like swipe through them. And um, here we have the map, and then here is where you change the language. And then we have the search bar, the help function, and then over here is like, um, like a helper. Like it, it speaks to you and guides you through the interface. <laughs> so the, the bottom is, is like a track pad, right, for children who are, like, they would need to put their hand on and then there's... Act like, it out for us. Okay, <laughs> hold this. <laughs> so let's say I were a child, right, <laughs> and then, like, my arm is that long. So when I move this, there would be, like, a mouse that goes onto each category for you to like click on it, like you just press it, and okay. then it logs you onto like the gallery. And on this side, there would be like um, it shows individual. What's it? Yeah, the individual dinosaurs. Like there are also other parts. What's it? The menu. Let's just put that on there. <laughs> yeah. So you press on the map, and then when you press on the map, it takes you to like certain areas of the of the museum, right? This is what the Natural History Museum, that's what it's called. And then once you're here, 
you still use your trackpad to take you either to the bathroom or the restaurant or another gallery or whatever. And there's a, there's a language interface on the top left. That's like the first thing that you're supposed to like read because when you read it's from left to right. So you start with your language and, and move on across the page. Oh, 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 the screen, right? So like this very wrong looking lever <laughs> is, so according to the problem description, right? Um, let's say someone in a wheelchair would like to access the screen since it's both touch, uh, touch screen and like you can use a trackpad. So let's say I'm the guy now in the wheelchair or I'm the kid. I can turn this lever this way or that way. It brings the screen down or, you know? So it brings the screen down. It depends on, well, your, your height basically or your reach. So if I turn it this way, it will go up and, you know, I turn it this way, it will come down and I can be able to use what I need to use. Yeah. <laughs> You managed to make two very cool um, usability uh, considerations. The trackpad's very cool for kids that can only reach the bottom part. It's a good solution to uh, in, not just move everything down to the bottom. And you found a really interesting way of having the actual device become a way to make it usable, which has nothing to do with the screen. And again, that's something that we sometimes forget is... Um, it's not just the interface you're designing for, it's the entire experience. So that's a way of solving for that experience. Thanks, guys. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So we are the kinetics in a way. So we are the representative of the team. So we're going to show what is happening here in a way. So this will be like an act. It's like it's a drum in a way. That's how we're going to do it. Oh, going in. Okay, it's going to have to be a quick drama. Though. Yeah, it's going to be quick. It's going to be a quick drama. Good evening. Can we have your name? Morris Nkosi. Okay. Oh, what do you want to do today? Can you select a language in a way? English for myself. Oh, good. We do have various of things. We have fun facts. What do you want to explore? For today, <laughs> just move this one. Can you pick one of the watches that we have today so you can control your movement and everything that we have today? So, this is the watch that I'm gonna use to control the situation that we have here. So, I'm going to go to maps. So, the movement will detect. This is the movement. Maps. Restaurant. Information. I have maps. So, it should change. It will change. So, maps it is. You go to the maps after selecting. Morris, we are excited to have you today. Where do you want to go? You can search your location. This is, your, this is my location at the moment. Where do you want to go here? No. I'm feeling like I can go to the dinosaur exhibition. Can I go there? Clearly appreciated. You can go there this evening. <laughs> Thank you very much. We can go to the dinosaur exhibition. So, this is how it works. This is our kinetic motion. This is our speaker. So, this system of ours can communicate with us in a way where you can feel co comfortable as a user and the machine we can call it machine learning in a way because that's how it is that's how it works this is us this is the new era this is the new generation thank you very much okay what we were trying to achieve here is that the screen has a motion detect. What happens is that 
it detects if there's a person here. For it to be interactive, you need to step in front of it. So it detects the height of the person who's in front of it. We have a speaker here, so the kinetic is connected to an external device. Maybe you watch all the, thing, the same thing as the... That game. game. The console. The, not Xbox. Nintendo Wii. Yeah, the Nintendo Wii kinetic things. Yes. So therefore, we can use motion to, uh, gestures. We had a round thing here, which was, in a way, it was a menu. Therefore, mm. we had different types. Yeah, no, that's of, very cool. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm going to have to cut you guys off. Um, but you made a wonderful presentation there. Thank you. I like the fact that you um, used the very specific uh, functionality that this one had, which is the connect, uh, kinetic motion sensor, and incorporated that in a fun way that kids can then interact with it because a lot of parents take their kids to museums and that interaction helps them to learn and interact and engage with things. So that's very cool, thank you. This is our welcome screen. It has every language, some of the languages. Welcome, I really don't know how to say that. <laughs> but if you scroll, it will show you all the languages, the maps of the countries, can find your, your language. And every time you click on a language, it will translate this, explore into your own language. So currently it's English selected. So it's welcome and explore. If it goes to a different language, it will type it out in that and then translate. When you click explore, uh, home. With your home, you have your search. You can search in that. Oh. Seriously. <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyway. Um, so maybe just stand a step back, please. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is a list of all the things in this specific session. This is the Egyptian exhibit. It has everything, the eye of Anubis, whatever that is. And then it has a map on your right. And on the map, to avoid having a lot of words on it, you have keys. You have keys where you would know that if you see a sign B, it's the bathrooms. If you see C, it's another info kiosk. And then it shows you your current location. And then you have all of the other sections, the history books, the bones, where you said that, the museum. Now, these are the promotions, uh, the featured, the exhibit, the um, the featured items on that section. If you click on one item, it takes you to that screen where you see the, the, you see the full picture and then the details about this specific item, okay. the history of it, where you can read. It has a search for keywords if you're looking for something specific in this text because histories are usually too long. When you click on the location, it will show you where the item is and where you are, so you can navigate to it, to find it. Uh, for kids, you would have this device, Sierra. There's a child. <laughs> shorter to navigate throughout the entire thing. Every time, <laughs> the, it works as a, a mouse pad, so you can either move it around and it will have a pointer on screen, or you can use the buttons to go back and front or select an item. You can also record your voice. Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay, for elderly people who, <laughs> who don't have too much strength to actually walk around the museum, we have like a virtual reality for them and they can enjoy the entire museum like at the kiosk, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very cool added feature uh, for people to actually use virtual reality. Um, and I really like the way that you've designed it and just consider the different ways that you'll interact through the, um, 
interact through the different screens. Um, I see there was a few places where you put search bars right at the top, but you did solve that through having an extra device which uh, then caters for that. And I see we have lost our mic. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, guys. We are, we are team just in time. <laughs> <laughs> That's our team name, by the way. So basically, this is our solution. It's very simple and straight to the point. We have, uh, this is the home page. We have a search bar. And, and an option to change your language if your language is not English, obviously. And we have four main buttons, map, exhibition, overview, promoted exhibitions, and museum. As soon as you click to map, it takes you to map, and this is the map we have. Obviously, we know your current location because we know where the device is in the museum. So probably you will select the, the destination, and it's going to show you the route to get to that destination. And then you can click back. As soon as you click back, you go back to this thingy. And then you can click here. Oh, another thing is, if, if you are a child, right, we have a camera here, just that it's, it's invisible for now, but we have a camera here. So <laughs> as, as soon as you go there as a child, we see that you're a child, it, 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 it automatically, wait, wait, wait. It automatically you child? sends you to, no, by your height. AI. AI. Yeah, AI. AI. It's AI. AI. <laughs> so, 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 so the, the, the AI can see that you are a child and then it takes you to exhibition overview, which is this page. So if you click to that, uh, if you click that button, it takes you to this page or if you are a child, it takes you to this page. So that's where you see everything about the museum. You see all the dinosaurs or all the old things we have in the museum. This is a slideshow you can skip and the text will be changing here. And then we have a back button and when you click back, you can click another thing. Maybe you click the museum history. And then it takes you to the museum history, which has a lot of text in it, <laughs> <laughs> basically. But then, but then this, that, the advantage of this is that it's good, it's simple, even old people can use it. You can use it, <laughs> unlike, unlike the AI thing is, like, if my, gran, if my grandmother walks here, she knows what to do. Unlike the AI thing that she has to click buttons and stuff, she has to wear VR <laughs> thing is, you don't even know. So here you just click, click, and see. You are, yeah, simple. We see your height. We know you. We, 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 take you. we take you to this page. Oh, to that page. And this is the history, and then back takes you where you were. It's simple and straight to the point, fast. So when I go there, I just click where I, where I want to go. I'm done. Next person, next person. So with the VR, a person can spend the entire day. You see, it's, it's not safe. It does not save time. It does not save time. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. So I, I like your AI um, way of detecting children. Um, it's a good way to solve it. Good luck finding someone to build that for you. Um, the, the one thing I would say is having your language as a drop-down, um, considering there are, what, two, three hundred languages, they might be scrolling for a while trying to find their language. Um, uh, yeah, so something to consider. And I see you've also shortened your interface a bit, cut it down a little bit, which is also f fine. Like sometimes you just need to cut things down to size to make them work. Although then tall people are going to have to be on their knees. So another thing to consider. <laughs> but it works. So cool. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, this is the Rector Museum's interface. It is, I mean, will be sponsored by your company. Well, we're all turning this space into the museum, so sure. Okay, so first of all, you have this interface, which is based like a language. Um, we have a kinetic also implemented here, which will detect when a new user arrives, and it will reset the language selection screen. Um, it will have a search bar. We can search for your language. Um, if it's not a popular language, you need to search for it. Um, okay, so you click on your language, let's say you click English. Oh. Um, then you get to a menu. Uh, on top of the menu you have, on top of the menu you have some, uh, some text, just like, a prom just like a promotion and some ads. And they have buttons. Uh, so you click on what you want to do. If you want to shop, you click on gifts. If you want to eat, you click on food and so on. Then you can search if you want to search for exhibits, I guess. Um, also, 
with the connect, it will actually look at your face and it takes your mood. And in the bottom over here, it will show you a cute cat picture if you're feeling down, <laughs> just for kicks. Okay, and then over here we have a map. The map is the same for all different buttons, except it gets highlighted and it gets selections to the item you click on. Um, and they will also be indicated here what you click on. Uh, if you feel you're interested in one of the items, you can also click on it and it will show you a pop-up of what that item is, which is on the next page or the one after that. You can also search the screen as well. Okay. If you click on the exhibit option, we show you like a list of categories so you can easily find exactly what you're looking for. And also the search bar, which always has to be there. <laughs> okay, so if you click on birds, it will share like a list. And then you can click on the item. When you click on the item, it'll show you this pop-up. The same pop-up will show you when you click on the item on the map. It'll show you some, some information about the same eagle. And you can hear the sound the eagle makes if you want to hear that. Um, and it's a video too. <laughs> yeah, and there's suggestions of other things you might like, considering you like eagles. And then a full screen video page, we're clicking a video button. We have suggested videos, obviously. Okay, nice. Like, I, I like the fact that you incorporated the connect in the way of like detecting your face. It's, having people like navigate uh, through it like that and then, like, actually interacting with them that way. And I, you have a, quite a nice logical flow of how you went through everything. This so one on one. there again, just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> no, just there's, there's a close button, top yeah. left, um, which will then become... We'll work on animation, sorry. We'll work on animation. <laughs> That's fine. No, but cool. Good job, guys. <laughs> Good evening. You have hired us. You've seen the map, so that's okay. You've hired us to provide software solutions to your interactive boards. Now, our suggestion is that this is basically going to be the main page. This is darkened just to conserve electricity and be environmentally friendly. But if someone actually touches on it at all, then it will brighten and be easily viewable for any user. We have things attached here. Now, these are objects that the board can actually detect. These are actually on both sides of the board. We've only used one side for this model. But the one object, if, it's, if it is touched towards the board, then the board rotates. Basically, just it flips to the other side if the user is standing on the other side and doesn't want to walk around. The other object is for people who might be colorblind. This, this is touched to the board and then it enables the colorblindness option, which will change all of the colors. This is an um, implemented software design. Now the languages are up here. It is actually a flag displayed here with languages underneath that just to kind of automatically register into someone Okay, those are the languages, and that is the language page. So, as you can see, we have all of the flags there in their native languages, named like that, so that you can easily go to your language if need be. All right, and we also have a search function here. If you want to search for any type of exhibit, like if you type in dinosaurs, it will just display any exhibits with the name dinosaurs. And this is our promotional banners. So basically, it automatically flips through them, but you can also control that just easily swiping. And if you click on one of these, it goes to this page, which will be the promotional banner page, which is actually, it's also horizontal like this. Now, if you go on to explore, that will take you to the map. But no, <laughs> but we're not going to show that right now. <laughs> okay, info. show us your most, most important features, because your time is up. All right, info, will info will take you to this info page. This will also take you to the map. Once you click on this banner, it takes you to this page. Clicking on this banner, gives you, which is the same banner, 
will give you more information on that specific promotion, which is displayed here. So these are just more pictures to give you more information on it, which is again can be flipped. Next page. Okay, so you've now started out this way. Do you now need to move to the side no, of the... They are all horizontal. It's, as you can see, these can usually just fit on like that. We, we would just... These are just okay. temporary designs. It's, it's all right. <laughs> this is the map. Now, the map... Sorry, uh, just they're leaving. If anyone needs to go to the Gau train station, uh, who's leaving? Derek is leaving if you need a lift with him to the Gau train station. Okay. All right. So, this is our map. We have all the key of the map there with key locations at the bottom. And it should be easily viewable by anyone. Our info page is here. Now, <laughs> right. These are key sections. Clicking on one of these sections will take you to the map, and that section will be highlighted on the map. And the map also displays a red marker where you currently are. So you can just trace your path easily. The key points at the bottom are things like bathrooms, the restaurant, the, um, all of the key locations like that. So clicking on those will also just display that on the map. So we believe that this should solve all of your problems and be accessible to all of the people actually visiting your museums. Thank you. Cool. So I, I like the extra uh, objects because your table had the ability to recognize objects that you place on it and then perform functions based on that. So it's very cool that you brought that in and uh, allowed for that interaction. Uh, I do find it unfortunate that you guys designed a portrait and you're displaying in landscape. I understand it can easily be adapted, but unfortunately paper prototypes are not that good at being responsive. So... Um, but, but we, we can imagine what you guys were going through, and it works well. Thank you. Okay, last team. Okay, um, this is our kiosk. We worked around the idea that it's for information. You want to find where you're going. It's not an entertainment center. We're designing for the functionality and for the user in mind. So you get there. This is our screensaver. It's showing you get there. It detects that you're here. That comes off. Easy, you can see it's welcoming. You've got exhibits that will scroll through as you're there. And they'll light up, so basically you can touch those. If it's a bit too far for you to reach, we have a, what do you call it, a button for height. So. This basically happens. The screen is shortened, same functionality, you can see everything. Hey. All right, so you have a map of where you are and it displays the ex um, exhibit, exhibits, the toilets, everything. You can also click, like if you wanna go to the bathroom, if you need a help desk, it'll all show on the map and you have promos showing. Um, when you click the search button, you have a search tab. Search tab just basically comes through. With a keypad, you type in what you need, enter, and then it displays on your map. Also, if it's not in the language you want, you click on the language button and Popular languages as well pop up. It's very simple, easy. Get the information you need and move on to go and see the exhibits. So I really, I really like your solution for kids, bringing the screen down to something that iPhone has because it's impossible to reach the top of the screen. So that's a very cool solution to bring everything down. And I like the way that you guys have prototyped by making separate elements that you can attach and move around. And the like concertina for the search bar, 
uh, it works really well to convey the concept of how it will work. Good job. And I like your logo. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for moving to us. Cool. Thank you so much for coming through tonight, guys. This was really fun having everyone here. I hope you all managed to learn something. Um, I learned quite a lot from all of you. Um, it's always fascinating to see how everyone thinks and applies things in very different ways. Um, so I think that you guys, or I hope that in future, when you're designing or developing, you'll have an idea of the kind of things that you need to consider when you're working with users. They see the world very differently than we do a lot of the time. And uh, we need to remember that and just have that empathy for um, people. And yeah, please keep in touch and follow us on Facebook and Meetup and Twitter. Um, yeah, I forgot to tell you, beginning of the night, if you want to tweet, the hashtag is hashtag rabbiteer2018. Um, yeah, keep in touch. We'd love to see you at our next workshops and talks.